Hi guys, it is August 31 now. I just want to alert you, if you own your home or have a commercial building somewhere, FEMA apparently has drafted changes that they're not going to be announcing until April 2020, but they will take effect October 2020 get ready get ready because these changes are really well talk about screwing the ordinary american and having them pay for uh incompetence of local governments well that's one of the changes so here, as risks rise, an overhaul announced for federal flood insurance. Ah, yes, it's not just coastal property owners. Wherever the flooding has occurred, and we have seen massive flooding all year, virtually every single day, the flash flooding, oh, and that flooding that came about because, you know, that drainage system in your community, well, the clogged drains, the sewage that backs up, yeah, you're going to be hit with having to get flood insurance if that drainage system, the sewer system, is old. Wow. All right. So the Trump administration... Uh, announced plans to overhaul the federally subsidized National Flood Insurance Program, increasing policy premiums to more accurately reflect flood risk and home values. The decision comes in the midst of historic flooding that has displaced thousands of people and destroyed homes, farms, infrastructure across parts of the U.S. Midwest. You're not in a flood zone right now? Do you know if you are? Well, I will link below to FEMA's revised flood map where you can put in your address and learn if you are in a flood zone now. So it's not just, you know, the homes along the Atlantic and Pacific and the Gulf. Uh-uh. You're next to a body of water? Oh, well. Um... To date, the program has largely set policy premiums based on whether a home is in the 100-year flood zone. It doesn't account for a home's value or its proximity to a body of water. So, a change in the insurance rating structure. Only a few changes have come out from the closed-door meeting. Um, what are some of the changes? Well, South Carolina, premiums are going to skyrocket all over the country. Yeah, Kansas, Nebraska, um, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wyoming, Montana, um, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, all oh, Kentucky, Tennessee, all over, Michigan, Wisconsin. All right, uh, new rates for single family home owners with policies under the National Flood Insurance Program will take effect next year under this new plan announced, but it's unclear what that will mean for policyholders in South Carolina. Under the new system, rates will be determined by also factoring in variables such as the distance a building is from the coast or another water source, a stream. Boy, they brought about a lot of flooding just from streams. And the cost to rebuild the home or a building, new rates, will go into effect October 2020 
Uh, some people's rates will increase, but others will decrease. Bull, I don't think they will. That comes from the Deputy Associate Administrator of Insurance and Mitigation. And they're going to, I have no doubt, require mitigation, elevation. And if you don't elevate, you ain't got no flood insurance. The ripple effect, it'll affect your mortgage. They want people out of their homes. Um, so the impact on homeowners in coastal low country communities, which face flooding risks from the Atlantic Ocean, inland rivers, storm surge, heavy rains, and high tides. So many people will be required to get flood insurance and they are not in a flood zone. Oh, but the revised flood map puts you in a flood zone because man is controlling the weather, bringing about an awful lot of torrential rain that's flooding out. Well, all flooding out communities all over our country. See, that's why it gets a little infuriating that our fellow Americans are still little children who call us conspiracy theorists. We've got to suffer the consequences of their apathy, self-centeredness, their willful ignorance that, that actually comes at us with such an arrogant hostility. They attack us and these people, they should be attacked for, people have to understand the ripple effect of one's behavior. There is a ripple effect. So, how one behaves affects us all. Charleston city officials are considering whether to require homes built in flood hazard areas be raised two feet above FEMA's minimum elevation. City officials, town officials, this is happening across, across the country. And town officials and city officials and state officials are passing rules, regulations, legislation requiring homeowners to elevate or to uh, get up to current code, which is very costly. So, you know, here at Long Island, I was just trying to find what are the proposed changes um, five million policyholders nationwide have not been notified? Well, you're not going to be notified until April 2020. So here, besides proximity to water, insurance experts said FEMA could consider elevation, the number of trees in the neighborhood or on the property and the age of storm drains on a given street. Look, Americans are already feeling the tightening of the noose. I can't afford to stay here much longer. This is Dottie Richards, who lives in Long Beach. She got hit with that manufactured Sandy storm and then <laughs> got hit with the corrupt insurance officials. There were a whole lot of lawsuits because the insurance inspectors were giving fraudulent reports. Yeah, we don't have a problem with our fellow Americans. They're good, decent people. It's just those crazy, uh, quote-unquote, elite 
psychopathic nut jobs who are filled with evil and want to destroy you. Really? Really. All right. Let's listen to Max Rose, who represents Staten Island residents. What he is talking about is, ah, uh, the FEMA proposed changes could devastate homeowners. I've got to pause you because I want to check out the volume that it doesn't blast you out. Okay, here we go. Because FEMA, all they've done publicly to date is release two pages of information and refuse to respond to our requests for more information. Now, because they're keeping us all in the dark, I can't say for sure that FEMA is screwing us. But from where I'm standing, it looks like we are about to get screwed. So first, FEMA screwed us in the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy, and now they are planning to screw us over all over again. Well, over our dead body, it's not happening. I will not stand for that. The residents of Staten Island, this great borough, the residents of South Brooklyn, people across the United States of America, we will not stand for that. So until FEMA is transparent, until they show us that they are not gonna leave us financially underwater, I'm gonna do everything in my power to ensure that Staten Island and South Brooklyn are protected from this bureaucratic hat job directed at our community. So here's what we do know right now. One, people in high flood risk areas are going to pay more in flood insurance premiums than they do right now. And families who were previously grandfathered under the last policy into lower rates because they built their homes in areas without understanding or knowing the underlying risk, well, they're going to have those protections taken away as well. Two, property owners, their premiums are not only going to be tied to coastal flooding, uh, like that which we experienced in Superstorm Sandy, but also rainfall, water runoff, and other causes of flooding. Now. This, ladies and gentlemen, for anyone who understands life on Staten Island these days, this is just rich. Because we have seen the damage rain does when coupled with Staten Island's decrepit storm drains and sewage water systems. You know, let's put this for a moment into the broader context of things, okay? Our infrastructure on Staten Island has been ignored for generations. As a consequence, when it just rains a couple of inches, it looks like a tsunami hit our communities. And now, you're gonna layer higher insurance rates on our backs because over and over again, government has failed us? Why must we be the victims of incompetence and ignorance and ineptitude at every level of government? Why must that happen to us? Well, not anymore. It will continue until Americans stand up and say, I'm mad as hell, I'm not going to take it anymore, and do something. Well, unfortunately, you know, those Americans who are still choosing willful ignorance, they're not getting that all of this is deliberate. All of it is deliberate to bring about Agenda 2030, you know, I have said in many of the videos on my playlist, U.S. Floods, and you will see how many communities, drainage problems, wow. And it seems to be uh, rec a recurring theme in so many communities all over the country. Drainage, sewage, backing up into homes. Uh, I wouldn't have been drained, I wouldn't have been flooded if the, the drainage system wasn't clogged or it's happening all over. And when I went to Baton Rouge in 2017 to see for myself the effects of floods, uh, I heard from many residents who said they would not have been flooded. It was the drains that they believe were intentionally closed so that they would be flooded. 
And now, if you live in a community and it's been flooded because of the drainage system, you will have to get flood insurance. Does that sound right? It ain't right. All right. This is coming too. Uh, if you adequately beef up your home and, and make it, you know, more hurricane resistant. The fellow who owns this particular home that I'm going to show you, this is in Mexico Beach, Florida, had it fortified to withstand 250 mile per hour winds and a host of other things. And it is virtually unscathed. I'm told, in fact, uh, not so much as a frame fell off that house. Look at the area around it. Look at what this guy did to make it as hurricane resistant, hurricane proof as it possibly can. Now, obviously, to set standards like that for all homeowners in a, in a damaged region uh, would, would, would obviously be very, very pricey. But it's an issue I want to take up with Douglas Holtz Beacon, um, who, who crunches numbers. The Congressional Budget Office did that, did the same for John McCain, looks at the, this sort of stuff. You know, as soon as you see something like that, you know, the immediate thing that hits you is uh, there are ways to prepare for these sort of things. They're expensive. Um, and in, in the case of this owner, uh, they, 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 they make the cost of construction a whole lot more. But if we mandated that, I don't know if that'd be a good or a bad thing, period, because it would exponentially drive up the cost to the government besides, right? Well, uh, you're going to pay before, you're going to pay after, Neil. Right? Yeah, if you have right. a mandate for, for stricter construction uh, 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 standards and a higher cost, it comes down to the construction cost. If you don't, the insurance policies that go to that house are going to be a lot more expensive. And even in Florida, you can see a difference between the standards they have along the Atlantic coast, which is the traditional uh, uh, place where hurricanes have caused a lot of damage, and the Panhandle, where the standards are not near as strict. And, and some of the devastation I think you see in Mexico Beach and other places is going to make them rethink that difference. Yeah, the, the reason why they're not as strict with the Panhandle is they, of course, hadn't seen anything like this in the better part of the century. Right. So. They felt either they could dodge a bullet or the bullet wouldn't be that severe. This one obviously was. But I am beginning to wonder because there is a good deal of rebuilding in the same communities that are hit, oftentimes again and again. Now, you could say the same about uh, the folks that rebuild in, in tornado alleys and all of that. So it's, a, it's hard to draw a line here. But it is interesting in the case of this one homeowner who decided to, to bite the bullet and, and to, to reinforce his own to the degree that he had. Uh, that it really did survive this very, very nicely. And, and whatever the upfront cost, net, net, it's, it's a huge savings. Right. Okay. And it's a huge savings for FEMA, right? Because they won't have to lay out any money for rebuilding. These mandates are coming. They are coming and they will be very costly. And a whole lot of Americans will not be able to uh, update their homes in accordance with what is essentially the international codes under Agenda 2030. Um, are you in a flood zone? Do you know if you're in a flood zone? And thousands of homes in Harris and Galveston counties are now listed in floodplains. These are homes that were not listed before. That means homeowners are required to have flood insurance. Jason Miles takes a closer look at these maps. Lee City here was a great place to come illustrate these changes. Nearly 300% more homes will now be required to carry flood insurance. City officials say the last time FEMA updated what are known as flood insurance rate maps was 20 years ago. Like many parts of the Houston area, this one has grown a lot since then. Some homes flooded during Harvey, some did not. Some were already required to have flood insurance, some were not. The new maps are a good way to know exactly what's expected, although officials here encourage everyone to get flood insurance. So that's not only happening in Texas. You've got to go and find out if you have been put into a flood zone. I'll link below. Sorry, something's in my throat. I'll link below to FEMA's uh, flood map service center. You put in your address, you'll find out if you are in a flood zone.
because they did revise their flood map. Um, you know, I also want to include this. Brittany Coles, she walks through her home, spotting mold in pictures of her three-year-old mixed in with the mess. There are days, like I said, that I come in and it's just worse. So she turns to her insurance to help them in this tragedy. I started filing claims. I filed our flood insurance claim, and then we went to file our home insurance claim. A policy she's told was canceled. For them to figure out that the mortgage company sent the check to another state. Our home insurance was canceled. They never told us, the mortgage company never told us we didn't have homeowner's insurance and we've paid for it. She says it's a mistake by the company that left her looking at what was left. To, to find that out was devastating. I literally had a panic attack. But when the company recognized 10 days later with her policy back, she's looking towards the future. May not be for months, may not be for a year. We'll be back. Now the next okay, so the reason why I included this was I had a conversation with a subscriber who was very happy to write out that last check. She was paying off her mortgage and then learned that her mortgage had, I think I am hoping I'm getting this right, her mortgage was sold to another con to another company and yeah it took uh, some time to get it all sorted out so do you know if who you have who you originally started with you know your mortgage um, holder they may they may not hold that mortgage anymore. So let's say you have a flood. What's going to happen to that woman is the repairs will be delayed. So you don't want that happening to you. I don't believe that all of this is, you know, incompetence or I actually do believe <clears throat> You know, that how does a mortgage company uh, send her flood insurance premiums to another state or okay something is very we have incompetence let's say exploding all over in government in in corporations in companies all industries so I would periodically check to see if your mortgage is still with the holder of the mortgage that you know. Hope I made that clear. But, you know, and in reading these articles, how homeowners can financially prepare for major storms like Dorian, what do you what do you read? Climate change? Older homes? Older homes will have to be uh, repaired but up to code which is going to be costly and poorly built homes so they're moving americans into this mandate to be up to code and if you're not it could it could mean your home is bye-bye this is the FEMA map. Check it out. A whole lot going on. A whole lot is going on that we don't know about. So unless you really dig into things, you will probably be surprised. And it's not going to be a happy, happy surprise. It's going to be a devastating surprise. So Dorian coming. Stay safe. Stay safe. Everybody in Florida, I did hear tonight from a neighbor that, well, they can't quite get that tracking right. And it may, it may just go to the coast of Florida and then go up 
the coast to Georgia and South Carolina. Really? Oh, okay. Well, yesterday, Hurricane Dorian was going to have a direct hit on Florida on Sunday. So it's Sunday because it is now 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I guess Dorian's, well, hanging out in the ocean. Uh, she'll be coming soon enough. But it may not hit Florida now. They can't predict this hurricane when it's a day or two out. Wow, something's gone wrong then, huh? With our forecasting, the models just don't seem to hmm, want to, um, you know, play right, play good. Now it's, you get these meteorologists who are, well, we're not really sure. They used to be able to forecast weather. Certainly a hurricane that was one or two days out. All links are below. Guys, stay safe, everybody. Stay safe.